I've taught many classes, directed programs, and one-on-one -on -one clients on how they can go about improving their brains and bodies. I love seeing people get better and them realizing how awesome they can be. Sometimes teaching the straight science, while other times teaching it as I guide them through learning a cool movement. But no matter what, I always found the core of what was being taught was how your brain goes about improving itself. But just how much better can your brain really get? So let's talk about what the brain's capacity is, how it improves, or rather what you can do to improve your brain's intelligence, all so you can ultimately understand, is there a set limit to how intelligent an individual like yourself can get? Intelligence is something that we can define as rate of learning. How fast can you learn a new skill? I say skill as no person is born being able to walk, knowing how to speak any language, or do anything. As pervasive as the excuse of talent can can be as a way for some people to make up for the fact that they don't know how the skill they might be teaching, let alone how learning itself works. This is a notion that's shown up in films across media where either the person got the magic learning bug or they're doomed to suck, which is based on very old and very wrong information. Talent is a fantasy, not a reality. You can learn any skill you want, let alone improve your brain enormously. So now, the brain's capacity capacity. When it comes to pure storage of how much information it can hold, while still being a topic of immense speculation, it has been loosely estimated to be something like 2.5 petabytes, or 2,500 terabytes of information. To put this in perspective, 2.5 petabytes could theoretically store about 3 million hours of movies. I say this is loosely speculated because it turns out your brain is way better than that, because unlike a computer of the same capacity, the brain does not store information in a linear or fixed way where you can see that a certain memory or skill is taking up, say, 5 gigabytes of storage. Memories and knowledge you require are distributed across networks of neurons across your brain. Memories and skills can even share and use the same neural pathways. Basically, new skills you get are integrated into existing ones. Your brain prunes faulty data while somehow increasing how well everything works. It's like a phone that instead of breaking down, constantly upgrades itself into the next generation for free just because you loaded new information onto it. The more you give it, the better it gets. One of the most miraculous things about your brain's capacity that makes it so you can learn something new lightning fast in comparison to someone else is a term called neural reuse. Neural reuse means that if you go to learn something new, if you have learned anything remotely only similar to it in the past, your brain will reuse those same pathways you worked for again to build the new skill. This way you can learn new skills way faster than if you had to go from scratch. An example is someone who does gymnastics can pick up parkour faster than someone who has never done anything movement wise or acrobatic before. Just like someone who takes the time to finally learn a new language can learn another completely new language way faster than the first time around. This is why learning anything like math the first time around is so taxing, because you have to build up all those synapses and structures in your brain from scratch. But once you do, you will have a really strong foothold to learn anything remotely like it from. It's likely that many of us will be gone long before we manage to ever tap out how much your brain can fit into itself and learn, which may be really hard to make happen anyways because it's so good at storing and pruning information information from it. That being said, there is a limit that stops people from reaching their full potential. I must mention that out of all the students and clients I've seen, I have never encountered genetics as playing the end-all be-all role as to what a person can do. Most people don't get close to genetics being the reason why they can't learn or do something. Genetics is not destiny unless you let it be. The real culprit that I found as a teacher that is both the most pervasive poorly taught, and pain in the rear to deal with is someone's beliefs, their attitude. Imagine having someone walk into your class that has no results, no skills, nothing to show for their belief, yet thinks that instant learning is real, or that effort is stupid and they should just have the thing. This is what causes teens and adults I saw to learn many times slower than nine-year-olds I taught, who if they were to suddenly one day show off their skills in a test or showcase, which happened, the storm of eight 
and nine-year-olds crushed these specific older students because their attitude completely changed their behavior and more specifically their rate of learning. With that out of the way, we can get into the actual physical limits that the human brain has for how fast it can learn and what you can do about it. The true limitation on how much and just how fast you can learn to do something new. Well, out of the gate, there is no scientifically proven upper limit to how much a person can learn or how intelligent they can become. The brain's capacity for learning and adaptation appears to be vast, with non-stop potential for growth throughout life, especially when a person actively seeks out new knowledge and challenges. The major physical limit that all of us are up against as a species is how fast we can cause synaptic plasticity or new synapses in our brain to form, and cognitive load being the brain's working memory or simply put how much information your brain can hold on to at one time before things start slipping away, errors are made, and your brain feels like shutting down in the middle of your inorganic chemistry class because the university says you need it to graduate. The brain is the most energy intensive organ we have, consuming up to 20% of our total energy to function at rest. When pushing yourself to learn new material, that number bumps up to anywhere from 25 to 30% of your resources. The brain also has a finite amount of chemical resources it can use before glitching out and needing to crash. Along with the fact that when at work, waste builds up in the brain faster than it can be cleared. That being said, you can probably push your brain longer and harder than you may realize. While we don't want to go into dangerous territory, the true limiter that actually causes us to stop having to learn or create new synapses is mechanisms like micro sleep, where the brain just can't keep going and forces you to phase in and out of what you're doing to recover no matter how much you might try to stay awake. Your rate of error steadily increases and eventually the brain just shuts down, forcing you to sleep. But if there's no ceiling other than having to just crash for how good you can get at something, including how fast you can learn, what are the best practices you can do to increase your rate of learning the most? Well, this is a case where the activities that just shut you down also cause your intelligence to increase the most. And this is where exposure comes in. Exposing yourself to openly engaging your brain through new information and skills that you have nothing on is what will lay the groundwork in a variety of different areas. So when you go to learn anything remotely like any of them, your brain will build much faster. But to really be specific on what you can do, while I also want to point out that skills that involve more than one area of the brain, like learning a new language, teaching, or complex motor skills, are the most useful because they take more resources and stimulate your brain better than other activities if you want to really stimulate your brain for maximum growth on anything. I found as a scientist and a teacher, you have to stick to the Goldilocks zone. The Goldilocks zone is the place where you can identify and put yourself or someone else at a step that is difficult enough that it forces them to put an effort without overwhelming them where they cannot make progress and give up. Nor is so easy that you can really just cakewalk through whatever you're doing. The Goldilocks zone ensures that your brain can actually accomplish the step and therefore can gather the data it needs to create new synapses rather than going so hard or so easy that you just get nothing. This is pivotal to the majority of my success for my own skills and as a teacher to anyone. Do this well and the Goldilocks zone will consistently slide up and you along with it. Now here's the twist. Yes, you want to stay within the Goldilocks zone as you're working. This zone is already tiring enough. However, in this zone, you can actually push yourself to the upper part of it, a point where you're just riding that line where you can just accomplish the thing before it's truly out of reach. This concept is called progressive overload. Just as muscles grow stronger when they are pushed to a slightly higher limit each time, your brain can develop a far greater capacity and endurance for how much it can handle the next time. When you purposely push things to become just a little too intense, tense and burn out your brain on what you're doing. This targeted overload can stimulate your brain to wire itself, strengthening and pruning connections that allow you to just better focus, learn, and solve future complex problems faster. The brain
brain adapts as the super smart muscle that it is. And now you'll find that your brain has to use even less resources to accomplish more difficult tasks and your brain's resilience to feeling any stress at all from things that used to stress you out. They're not enough to even get a stress response out of you. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved an interesting fact for last. Once you take the time to learn a new skill, the speed at which your brain can process it or a skill like it also increases, allowing you to adapt to new skills and situations faster than when you were new. With us going over in depth how someone can increase their intelligence or focus in these videos. Hope this helps and see you in the next one.